First up, from Chittenango, New York, 19-year-old Miracle Boy, Dave Mira. For me, he was the BMX superhero. He was this, you know, larger-than-life BMX legend. Save. He didn't mean to do that, but hey, make a trick out of it. That's why we call him the Miracle Boy. Anything he went to do, it was like 100% just passion. There it is! Oh, oh. When he wanted to compete and do well, everybody better get some popcorn, sit down, and watch the show. I think Dave was BMX. Dave's early days, it started out like a lot of people, it was just like the love of riding bikes. When I first met him in uh, 1989, he was a little kid. Dave was a skinny little kid, even at 15. But when you saw him ride live, it was just like, I mean, just unlimited talent. You know, the guy was just one of the most naturally talented bike riders ever to touch a bike in the history of two wheels. Dave Mira, you're going out next from New York. He just seemed like this like little kind of skinny grom kid that was like just so eager to, to ride and to learn and and there's a video of him doing like seven or eight whiplashes and that was like his record and he was really proud of that. Seen photos of him riding like this super skinny like backyard vert ramp and he was just like really, really in love with BMX. I was at the time one of the top five amateurs in the country and I realized, whoa, uh, I either got to step it up or be ready to get knocked down a couple notches next year. I guarantee you that 15-year-old kid is going to be smoking you by the time he grows another, you know, half an inch and puts on a little bit more muscle. Get ready because he's going to take over. I think he kind of took the place by storm. Dave Mira getting set to fly. He's having a hard time holding Mira down. Oh my goodness, he is sky and high. I remember like Hoffman telling stories about him going like, well, like this guy is now a pro. I guess I better get used to getting second place. To make another jump in the trophy case, Dave Mira is gold medalist again. When X Games came along and it turned into this, you know, cultural event every year, that's when Dave really just took over. You know, he, he could win anything at any time and make it look good. And he had the personality to go along with all these cameras on him. They had a superstar. I started riding in 1998. I used to watch Dave ride vert a lot. And I begged my mom for nine months, please, I need the Mira Pro. I really need the Mira Pro. And this is around the time that I would see Dave air and what he did. And I had to like, I had to copy. I remember I had a full face because Dave had a full face. Um, I could not find a Slim Jim sticker to put in the front. Yeah, it's crazy to think that the influence he had. For me, it, as well as like everybody else too, like paved a way, you know, like he was the guy that was driving for us. So in some ways we all rode on Dave's coattails. Dave Mura gets heartfelt congratulations from Dennis McCoy and from Matt Hoffman and the gold medal here at the X Games. And then you watch X Games 98, 99, and it's like doom, 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 like Something sparked in him and he changed. He changed and then I think he made everybody else change. He made the sport change. He is stamping his name in gold. The champion on the street. The champion on the vert ramp. Dave Mira has put it away in spectacular style.
Dave, in my eyes, was the first one to really think about the course as a whole and a run as a whole. And he set the standard for like, no, no more just huck fest. We're gonna make these complete runs and they're gonna be smooth or else you're just not gonna be able to hang. Flowing like crazy right here, full on mirror style. Yeah! Man, he's going haywire! Golly, Dave, easy, Tiger! By 2000, th there isn't a person in the U.S. that didn't have kids that didn't know the name Mira. I think Dave was able to connect action sports with the mainstream just because he, I think he had the right formula. He was driven passionate. He settled for nothing less than the best when it came to his riding. Good looking kid, really energetic, down to earth, humble, but he had this, you know, intensity and he was this competitor too. And, uh, you know, the public, it was easy to get enamored with Dave. All these little things I, I think is what made Dave be able to be the face of action sports, you know, not only BMX, I think it was all or the, the entire realm of action sports. I think they saw a bigger picture than we all did. He was able to show the world what BMX was. We were real athletes, that this is a real sport. It's, it's crazy to think a little kid from upstate New York and riding a bike and next thing, superstar. Next thing, just legend. We are at the Daniel Dares Action Sports Complex in Holly Springs, North Carolina. Most of these ramps came from Dave Mira's Animal House in Greenville, North Carolina. Yeah, like the mural, you can see it like in pieces all throughout the park, that's pretty awesome. So since we're here with a lot of Dave's ramps, you up for some Dave-inspired moves? I know you got some. I might be able to do one or two. Don't get nervous. Can you we make just, me nervous. Can we just call them out? <laughs> yeah, sure. You get it done? Seriously, what? so All we right. can just jukebox it right now? Like, put a quarter well, in the Show me what you got, bro. What all you got? Right, well, let's get warmed up, and he'll just, we'll, we'll discuss. We'll all right, discuss. all right. See ya. I'll let you, uh, I'll let you call the first I'm one. I'm calling out Flip Whip. Mirror <laughs> Flip Whip. Straight up the bat, Flip Whip. Yep. Like a mirror, roll. blaster, Flip Whip, front wheel smooth. Yeah. Daniel, Flip Whip. All right. Here it is. Nice. Oh. Yeah, bad. Daniel. What else do you want to call out? I always thought it was rad, like Mira did the first like no handed seven. All super smooth, not all herky jerky. Just like and hands off like in total yeah. Mira style. So love it. Daniel, no handed seven. Tuck no handed seven. All right. Oh nice. Dang. Oh, like he hands off for sure. He gets like more inverted than David did, but like definitely clean. Work out. Nice, yeah, dude. Thank nice. You, that was thank awesome. You. Thanks. Yeah. How about I got the next trick? Okay, that's fair enough. We kind of called out a, a couple yeah, for you. Yeah, your turn. I was like, no foot can can to tail with pair. Love it. Yeah. Right, awesome. Yeah. Love this trick. Oh. Nice, yeah. Daniel. That's so sick. It was just sniff of a can and right like two the separate pedal. trips. And yeah, like, yeah, awesome. Dude, that was rad. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Daniel. Yeah. Dave awesome. would have been proud, and then he probably would have been like, hey, pay me because those are my tricks. You owe me royalties. <laughs> <laughs> also, that, that, that was pretty cool, but I went higher. Uh, he would have, yeah, he would have probably broken out the videotape and be like, see, this is like, like you're at six <laughs> and I'm at eight. So Really cool to see it on parts, parts of Dave's setup, too. It, I mean, it's a little bit heavy to watch, but it's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's Thanks, definitely Daniel. fitting. Yeah, well, I think at the end of the day, you know, it's the least we could do for him, so. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Dave had the eye of the tiger when it was contest time, when it was go time. Early 2000s, late 90s, it was almost like people were battling for a second and third when Dave was on the ramp. It wasn't really like a question of, you know, if Dave was going, it was going to be like, when and how many times. By far, not even a close margin, the most competitive person I've ever met. When he wanted to compete and do well, everybody better get some popcorn, sit down, and watch the show. Man, they have come to see Dave Mira. Oh my goodness, he is sky and high. Mira is on fire once again. He looks like a champion. won X Games, he won three gold medals. You know, it was Park, Vert, and then uh, him and Dennis McCoy rode Vert doubles, and they won the gold. 
Dave Mira, he makes it look so easy. Feet back, my goodness. There's your gold medalist right there. 1998 is the year that I started riding, and it's the first year I watch X Games. And I see Mira just won park, and then I watch the vert run, and he wins vert, and then they go into vert doubles, and he wins vert doubles, and you know, there's this entire hype, and I, I remember like, dude, Dave is insane. That's impressive. It's impressive just because to do three events at one X Games, it's, it's hard. I would say I'm surprised, but I'm not. <laughs> Dave just walked away with gold medals all the time. Dave's double flip was, um, it was a pretty strong moment for BMX and X Games. It was definitely one of those holy grail tricks that all the top pros had in their mind at the time. And that's what Dave really built his career on was biggest tricks, most difficult tricks in the sport. Once you were watching the, the event, it was like, yeah, he might do it, he might do it. You see the big box in the middle, it's like this might actually happen. I think BMX really wanted the Tony Hawk 900 moment. Who better to do that than our superstar, or you know, our superhero? I think everybody's just kind of holding their breath, like when you know something's about to happen like that. No man to the box. You just saw him torque, and it was just like whew, one, and then two. There it is! Oh, oh, oh. It never ceases to amaze me. I tell you what, incredible, Dave Mira. And because I'm behind, I'm I missed the landing. It looks good. It became very obvious very quick with the cheers and like people freaking out like that he pulled it and then you see him, for me, I saw him just pop up and like hit the wall ride and I'm just like, oh my God! God. And when he did it, you know, as a kid, I was like, that's it, it's over. Be, like, he just shut down BMX completely. Dave did one of these holy grail tricks on the biggest platform in BMX, game changer. I cannot think of another moment in BMX history that could say this trick changed BMX as a double flip. The double flip is a staple in BMX and will forever be remembered as one of the, the best tricks ever executed. As an announcer, you, you sort of knew, well, he was favored. Every time he rode, he was favored. You know, you got a smile on your face when, okay, Mira's up, this is gonna be good. Whoa! <laughs> For a save. He didn't mean to do that, but hey, make a trick out of it. The flip up over the spine to the quick uh, swerve to the right, tail tap. I don't know how his tires held. It was must have been on the very last tread because he just whoosh, popped up. I, I can only smile because that was an event where I was like, I thought I was actually going to win. People call him the miracle boy for a reason. I know people always wonder why. No one else on the planet could have saved that. I just, there's just no question. That was as big as any trick Dave had ever done on purpose because every BMXer that knows, like that's impossible. That did not just happen. As soon as I saw him do that, I was like, <sighs> second place. It was just like classic Mira. You know, he had the nickname Miracle Boy and that was like one of his miracles is that he made that work. <laughs> we just started calling him the Miracle Boy because he could save anything, it was a miracle. That's why we call him the Miracle Boy. The amount of X Games medals he has, or gold medals specifically, it's an easy uh, way to tell you how competitive he was, how intense he was, his overall dominance for a long period of time. You know, he wasn't the top guy for just a couple years. It was a whole generation. He did park and he did vert, and he was able to dominate both at the same time. It was just like, this guy's unstoppable, you know? So, so to have that kind of dominance in two different disciplines. Oh! Just an absolutely fabulous ride by Dave Mira. It's rare, you know, it really is rare. Any champion in any sport that has the uh, results list like Dave has, I mean, they're just these one in a billion people that have this mentality that's just gonna drive them. And he had the skill and athleticism to back it up. BMX will never see anything like Dave again.
What I know with myself is that, you know, it was something where you started small, you started out riding, and you just kept taking things to another level, pushing limits, being out there every day and finding out what's possible and then just taking it to the next level. I guess it's more than just a hobby, it's a lifestyle, it's a part of you and, and you know, whether you're competing or just riding because you want to ride, I think there's, we're all driven by the same. It's just, it's testing yourself and, and challenges. I mean, challenges are, are there every single day. It just depends on what you want to put into it on a daily basis. Although it is an individual sport, it's, it works a lot better when you ride with friends that you have a good time with. It's pretty cool on a daily basis, what you get out of it. You're smiling. How long I've been riding my bike and how long it's taken me to get this far and, and it's worth it. If you like something, work at it. No matter what anybody says, believe in yourself and do it, you know? And I did something I love to do. I did it all in that arena. The memories that I have and the things I've learned through what I do, you know, on and off the bike, it's been priceless. Tate's legacy in BMX, I, uh, that's really tough. It, it hasn't been that long at the time of filming since we lost Dave. I, to me, it's, I need time to breathe to figure out what that is. It may be a little too soon for me to answer, but the easy answer was he changed BMX. I think Dave's legacy is that, you know, dreams can come true. I think he opened the, the door for us to, to, to live the lives we live today. He also showed us that you can live a good life by doing what you love. I don't know if you could put it in words. Honestly, it's a, it's a, it's a moment in time I was fortunate enough to live through and see how he really grew the sport, you know? We're all fortunate, and we should all be very thankful that he was there and he was the guy to do it, because, you know, if there was somebody less consistent or less driven, like, who knows how it would have played out, but we had Dave. Any new athlete that goes in today, we'll never meet him. But they're there because of him. We have made it this far because of him. He's still inspiring people, you know? It's like, with all this footage re-emerging and people like really learn about him, it's like, the dude's still an inspiration and he still is able to affect people. And so that's what I'm choosing to use my energy for, is just to like say, hey man, like that, the guy was amazing. Who knows if there'd be anybody ever like him again, you know? Like he did so many cool things and inspired so many people. And so that's what I want people to remember. Dave, as a writer, will be remembered. Dave's tricks will definitely be remembered. Anytime we sit anywhere in the world and we talk about a trick, it's like, yeah, yeah, but Dave did it higher. Or, yeah, yeah, but Dave did it better. So I think his legacy encompassed more than, than just his medals and just riding his bike. He encompassed progression. And I think anytime people progress a trick, they will think of Dave. Nobody rides like that. I mean, it's, it's almost like a lost art. The way Dave would ride and flow a ramp and just blast it and these tricks and how dialed he was, like, it's just nobody's been able to emulate that. And I, I don't see anybody coming up anytime soon that will. When Dave left us, like, that, that style of riding like, that he had kind of left us too. Personally, how I remember Dave, he was one of the most inspiring people I ever met, knew, was a fan of, got to watch, got to see him grow up. I want to remember him for what he did and all the positive things without judgment. And to me, that's the most important part is without judgment. Dave left a mark on this planet like few people ever, ever do or will or will in the future. And all of it is really good. Whatever we go from now, whatever we move forward to, is because of him. He had a vision, he had a passion, he had a dream, and he made it true, man. He made it come true, and, and he was not a selfish person. He did not keep this to himself. He was able to make this happen for everybody. And I think that's why Dave was Dave Mira. He was a great athlete, a great writer, but the best of all, he was a great person. If I was 
able to somehow tell Dave, like, or let him know how much he impacted the world, you know, like not just the sport of BMX, but like the entire world. Like, I mean, it's unfortunate that you, you don't really know how important people are until they're gone. Um, but with Dave and his passing, like, you really saw like the entire world, like kind of coming together to like celebrate this guy's life. Yeah, I, I'd love to share that with him because I think it would have showed him how important he was to, to all of us. I would just say thank you. You know, um, personally, thank you for being a great friend. Uh, on behalf of BMX, thank you for everything you've done for BMX and for being the ambassador that you have. Uh, it would not be where it is today without you. And we're eternally grateful for that and for, for continuing to play that role as a you know, great ambassador for, for BMX and just being a great human being. I think if I could say something to Dave, it's just thanks for everything. Seriously, you know, we live the life we live today thanks to you. We, you know, you have taught me a lot on my bike. You taught me a lot uh, off my bike and, and I will miss you. I will miss you and I will, uh, I will ride for you for sure. And whatever I'll do from now on is about progression, it's about change and how we can make things better. And, you know, thanks. Thanks for everything, for sure.